Welcome to STEM class! There are so many things we can communicate with pictures, whether it's funny cat pictures or memes or fine art or family photos. Working with pictures on computers is fun and useful. But how can computers send and store these images? Let's imagine something that is a little bit like what computers do. Imagine you wanted to send this picture to your grandma and she lives far away. Hmm, pretend you can't use the mail and the only way you can send it to her is over the phone. If you described it to her and said, oh, I made this orange jack-o'-lantern with a, a face and a green stem, she might not imagine the same thing that you drew. But what if she had a grid at her house and you gave her instructions about how to draw this same picture? You might say, on the first row, skip three boxes, then color two green. On the next row, skip one space, then color two orange, then two green, then two orange. And you could do that for each row in the picture. You could give her instructions for each row, and if she followed your instructions exactly, she would end up with the exact same picture. This is kind of like how computers send images. They break them up into small pieces and send each piece one at a time. Then, on the other end, Another computer can put them back together and get the exact same thing. But not every computer image is blocky pixel art like my pumpkin. How could a computer send an image like this? All computer images are made up of tiny dots called pixels. If you zoom in really close to an image, you can see it's made up of dots or squares of different colors. You can see these pixels on a screen at your house if you have a magnifying glass. The bigger the screen, the easier it is to see the pixels. But I'll show you what I found at my house. Last year in STEM, we looked through a microscope to see a phone screen. Do you remember what we saw? We saw little tiny lights. There were three colors. There were red, green, and blue lights. We can make any color by changing the amount of red, green, and blue light in each pixel of the image. So when a computer needs to send an image, it is really sending how much red, green, and blue should go in every pixel of the image. In your STEM packet, turn to page six where it says computer images. You'll see a grid here. I made a secret picture for you that you can decode by using these numbers. Each square has some zeros and ones in it. There's three of them. The first one, is for red. If there's no red, it'll be a zero. If there is red, it'll be a one. The next one is for green, and the last one is for blue. So let's take a look at this first square. It says zero, zero, one. So it means no red, no green, and yes, blue. So what color is that gonna be? If there's no green or red, just blue. That's gonna be blue. So we'll color all the zero, zero, ones blue. Next we have a one, zero, one. Hmm, that means there's gonna be red, but no green, and also blue. What do red and blue light make? Yeah, kind of a magenta or purple. Um, if it says zero, 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 that means there's no red, no green, and no blue. If there's no light, then we get black, so we can color that black. If there's one, 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 it means there's red, green, and blue light. If we have all three colors of light shining together, we get white. If this is a little bit tricky, don't worry, I put a key over here that you can reference if you get confused about what color each thing should be. When you're done with that, the next page has two grids where you can draw your own pictures. You could even send one to someone else by telling them what's in each square if you wanted to. You can draw anything, but grids make it really easy to draw something symmetric. So maybe think about that as you're deciding what to draw. Uh, there's also a website where you can draw pixel art if you want to try that out. When you're done, take a picture of your pixel art and share it with your class. The next time you see an image on your computer, think about the computer sending each pixel one at a time to make that image for you. I hope you stay safe, have fun, and keep decoding.